In this video, we're going to continue completing the square, and we're going to begin with a more a simple example and then try a couple more that are a little bit more challenging. So we're going to solve the problem of x squared plus 6x equals negative 5. Now, we could solve this one by factoring, but we're going to solve by completing the square. And in order to do that, we need to make, and I'll write this down, make the left-hand side, I'm going to abbreviate that as the LHS, make the left-hand side a perfect square. So let's write the left-hand side. It, remember this game we just played? We, we played this game a moment ago where we said if x squared plus 6x plus, and we had a blank line, and we said equals, and then parentheses, squared. And we found what would go in the parentheses by starting with the 6. We knew that if we took 1 half of the 6, we would have our answer. Well, that's 3. So that gives us that these parentheses are x squared, oops, I'm sorry, not x squared, x plus 3. And we also know that to go into that last position, we take the 3 and we square it to get 9. That goes here. And that was the pattern. So what we're going to do now is we are going to write the left-hand side as a perfect square. Well, it's a perfect square if it has, uh, let's put that 9, we'll put it up here. It's a perfect square if we have the 9. So let's write it that way. x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals negative 5. Now, at, at that point, you should, at this point, you should be concerned. You should be concerned because you can't just stick a 9 into one side of the equation. But in algebra, you can, provided that you stick a 9 onto the other side of the equation as well. So let's add 9 to the right-hand side. So that was our big, that was the big move here, is we added 9 to both sides of the equation. Now, now look at this. We know that if we have x squared plus 6x plus 9, well, all of our work up above just said that we can write it this way, as x plus 3 squared. So let's do that. That gives me x plus 3 squared on the left-hand side and a 4 on the right-hand side. Now we can take the square root of both sides. So I get x plus 3 squared equals plus or minus square root of 4. Then on the left-hand side I get x plus 3 equals the square root of 4 is 2. So I'm going to go plus or minus 2. Then we subtract 3 from both sides. So our final answer is x equals negative 3 plus or minus 2. Now you should always, when it's just two numbers that can be so easily combined, you really should write them out. And one of your answers is x equals negative 3 plus 2. And your other answer is going to be a negative 3 minus 2. So if we clean those up, our answers are negative 1, comma, negative 5. Okay, now let's pay. Remember, the whole key, the whole key for this problem is start with this B term, take half. All right, with that in mind, let's try it. Let's try a little bit more challenging one. One that makes you trust the math not even if you can't quite see the pattern as easily like this. How about x plus 3, I'm sorry, x squared plus 3x plus 1 equals 0. Now, this is why we complete the square, because you cannot solve this quadratic by factoring. So we're going to try it, though, by completing the square. In other words, and when we complete the square, we only do it on the pieces that have the x squared and the x. It's this 
it's this term, it's the constant term, we call it the one. This is the problem term. Write that a little smaller. This is our problem term. So, move it over. Or move it out of the way. So let's do that. So in other words, I'm going to subtract one from the left, subtract one from the right. Now I have x squared plus 3x, and I'm going to leave that blank, plus blank equals negative 1. Okay, now we use exactly what we said above. We said the key to doing this is we take one half of this b position, which is 3. So if we take one half, multiply it by 3, we get 3 halves. And then we take our 3 halves and we square it. So that's going to be 9 fourths. Now, now we can rewrite the problem and fill in the blank. The 9 fourths goes in the blank. So let's write that. I have x squared plus 3x plus 9 fourths. Now if I add 9 fourths to the left, I have to add 9 fourths to the right. Now two things happen here. On the left hand side, we also know that this, this 3 halves, is how we write our perfect square. We don't even have to try to factor it. We just know from what we've been practicing that this becomes x plus 3 halves squared. And that's going to equal, and you should take a minute and work on the fractions, but I believe that gives us 1 fourth. Okay, now, as we continue, oh, I'm sorry, not 1 fourth, goodness, it gives us 5 fourths. So I have 5 fourths. Okay. Then we take the square root of both sides. So I have square root of x plus 3 halves squared. And I take plus or minus. We're going to have a square root of 5 fourths. So on the left, I have x plus 3 halves equals. Now we can still have our plus or minus. The square root of 5, we can't simplify. But the square root of 4 is 2. So let's write it like that. Okay, now we subtract. We have, oops, let's write it this way. We subtract 3 over 2 from both sides. So I have x equals negative 3 over 2 plus or minus square root of 5 over 2. You can leave the answer like that, or you could think that there is a common denominator of 2. So if you wanted, you could also write this as x equals negative 3 plus or minus square root of 5 over 2. You could write it that way as well. And if you wanted, you could write it as plus or minus the square root of 5 minus 3. Those would all be, so I'll just write that so you can see. You could switch the order, plus or minus square root of 5 minus 3. That would be acceptable as well. All right, here's our challenge problem for this section. Problem looks like this. Solve, solve 2x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. Okay. This problem I think you'll enjoy it because it's got some interesting twists. And the twist begins right there with this 2. Notice this is, a, this is the difficulty or the challenge. I like that better. Because in all of our problems above, the number, and remember 2 is in the a position, so we'd say that a is 2 if we remember that our general form is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Now, normally, so far in all of our problems, 
so or we'll do this so far a is always one and that's what we have to do first is get that a which is now two back to a one so let's write make a note of that let's see get a oops get a back to one And we do that by dividing the entire equation by 2. So let's write this out. So I'm going to have a 2x squared, and I'm going to divide that by 2. Minus a 5x, divide that by 2. Plus a 4, we'll divide that by 2. And 0, we divide that by 2. So now we have x squared minus, now I'm going to write it this way, 5 halves times x plus 2 equals 0. And now we can continue the process exactly like you would expect. And we do that, we're going to move a little faster now, by we take 1 half of the b term, which is the negative 5 fourths. Oops, 5 halves, excuse me. Negative 5 halves. So this becomes negative 5 force. And we're going to need this extra piece. We're going to need to square it. So let's take our negative 5 force and square it. That's going to be 25 sixteenths. Okay. Now before we can do this, remember we need this 2 on the other side. So I'm going to kind of do a couple steps here. So we'll, no, I won't. Let's, let's do this one at a time. So I have x squared minus 5 over 2x equals negative 2. Now I can put the 25 sixteenths back into the problem. And, and I probably should have noted, I went minus 2 equals minus 2 here. That is not a very good looking 2. There. Now, we know that by adding that 25 sixteenths, that the left-hand side, our left-hand side, is now a perfect square. And you know it's a perfect square if you use the, this piece here, this piece, the negative 5 fourths. That's what we want. So we get the left-hand side becomes x minus 5 fourths squared equals, oh, I made a mistake. See what I forgot to do? I forgot to add my 25 sixteenths to the other side as well. There we go. So now I have, well, let's see, 2, negative 2 is the same as negative 32 sixteenths plus 25 sixteenths. So it looks like that's coming out to 7 sixteenths. So let's clean that up. x minus 5 fourths squared equals minus 7 sixteenths. Now we're making tracks. Now we take the square root of both sides. plus or minus square root negative 7 sixteenths. Then I have x minus 5 fourths equals, this is going to be a plus or minus i square root of 7 over 4. Now one last step, we add 5 fourths to both sides. And my answer is x equals 5 fourths plus or minus i times the square root of 7 over 4. And that is how you use completing the square to solve a quadratic. Thanks for watching.